Hello friends, welcome to TechQuest channel. This is for the medical technologist by your tech. In this video, we will discuss about linearity, also called AMR validation, analytical measurement range validation or calibration verification. Calibration is the process of establishing a correlation between the measurement signal generated by an instrument and the true concentration of analyte in the calibrator. Calibration is setting the analyzer with the reference point to that patient samples are compared to produce test results. Simply, it is telling the instrument how to read analyte concentration from the patient samples. On the other side of calibration verification is the process of testing material of a known concentration at different known concentration in exactly same manner as patient samples to assure the test system is accurately measuring samples by proving that the values generated are expected values. Standard Institute CLSI as per their EP06A guideline the ability within given range to provide results that are directly proportional to the concentration of the component in the test sample. In simple, we are checking the linear calibration curve at the low and higher levels and also the middle range with known concentration samples. What is the range we need to check? The reportable range as per CLIA is defined as the span of test results low end to high end that the laboratory can actually verify the results of a clinical test system for a given assay. The reportable range includes the sample dilution for high level of analytes. Example HCG beta. Here the linearity is outlined as the relationship between the final analytical result for a measurement and concentration of the analyte being measured. As per the College of American Pathologist, the CAP, the analytical measuring range, what is analytical measuring range? Range of concentration of an analyte that a method can directly measure without any dilution, concentration or other pretreatment. Why linearity or the calibration verification is very important? Because it's required by the accreditation authority. If the calibration changes, the patient test results value will change. The linearity or calibration verification can detect problems earlier than the quality control or proficiency testing. If linear range does not cover analytical measurable range, may be problem with the reagent, specimen handling or analyzer. Need to do adjustments to reportable range to reflect the linear range. How often to run the linearity or calibration verification. If our lab performs calibration verification every six months, we do not have to perform separately for any laboratory accreditation program. Otherwise, we need to perform every six months. Whenever there is a complete change in the set of reagents to a new lot, we need to do it. There is a major preventive maintenance or replacement of critical parts of the instrument, we need to do the verification. Relocation of the instrument, quality control data showing a drift, trend, shift or the QC or outside acceptable limits. Sample source of materials and acceptability criteria determined by the lab director. Patient sample can be used. The high level samples can be preserved and used with different dilutions for different concentrations. Standard reference materials can be used for calibration verification. The calibrators can be used. 
and commercially available kits are used for linearity or calibration verification. The basic thing is it has to cover the minimum and the maximum reportable range, analytical measurable range and the sample can be diluted at any intervals. The CAP Instrumentation Resource Committee offers linearity surveys at a tool for evaluating linearity. The linearity program provides pre-prepared analyte spiked human samples, mostly serum or some urine samples, covering the full expected operating range for the analytes being tested for linearity. Lyophilized samples when used earlier and the analyte spiked individual sample minimizing the imprecision due to manual piloting. How many samples to cover an analytical measurable range? The appropriate evaluation of linearity requires five different concentrations spanning the analytical range. The sample should be spaced where analytical relevant. Frequently equal spacing is sufficient. Spiking a biological material with known amount of analyte making serial dilutions or creating mixtures with different ratios of high and low standards are all acceptable approaches that can be used to prepare the test samples. At least two replicate samples should be run to allow for estimation of random error. Samples should be run in random order along with other samples after checking that the instrument is calibrated and in control. After running the sample at five levels, take the mean of each sample and check for precision of the instrument. These results will be within total allowable error. Plot the sample value on y axis with the true value on x axis for visual review. The best fit line may be drawn for experiments using equally spaced sample solutions. Visual assessment is a simple and intuitive tool for an expert technologist with good understanding of the method. Here I have explained a sample of glucose linearity and the graph. We will have another video on linearity errors to explain what are the common errors and what are the common problems, issues and how to solve those issues. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.